question is from Alexandria. Is not eating right after I work out slowing down my progress? Probably you still, not. You still picked all these macro questions, yeah. guy. Hey, man. You talked it, all it has, this, it has a, a, a you know, workout component to it. <laughs> you talked all this <laughs> shit, and then you had to pick all these macro questions. No, I spread it out because I know you guys love talking about it. You know what I mean? I was like trying to include you guys. Like I could have handled an all-training conversation today. It's <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah. I don't no, know. Um, no, not really. You're not really slowing down any progress. There, there, you know, there's studies that show if you eat after your workout, it speeds up the you know, part of the recovery process, which would be to replenish energy that you've expended in the muscles. That's part of the recovery process. But it, but, other, but it really doesn't matter when you eat. If you eat later on, you still replenish those yeah. energy stores. Really, it only va- the only value in, that goes into eating right after you work out is if you plan on working out again later in the day. Right. Mm. And you need to replenish those you energy know, this, stores. You know, I blame the bodybuilding community for this one. And this was something that I remember when I was competing. anabolic window. Is key, key right. Hand or, no, yeah. totally. And I, and I remember when I was competing that this was like one of the easiest strategies I used to lean out. So like I would work towards building my metabolism up and consuming five, 6,000 calories. And then now when time, now it's time to cut for a show six, eight weeks out or so. And I start coming the other direction. One of my favorite things to start to restrict calories is post-workout. I just stopped eating that meal and I would try and stretch myself for as long as I could until the next, until I was like, I got to eat. It's been, mm-hmm. a, you know, it's been a couple hours after my workout. And now I want to eat. Who cares about this, this anabolic window that everybody hypes up? Like it's that important. What I know is that when I go into a workout, especially when I'm following a diet where I'm already eating on average a lower amount of calories, and then I go work out, I've completely depleted my glycogen stores. And if I'm still walking around, I go home from the workout, I shower, I'm doing things around. Now you're fat burning. Right. My body is now going to switch over to metabolizing fat as a source of energy because I've already tapped into all my my stored energy. So I used to look at it like, wow, this is a great opportunity for me to just stay busy, keep going through my day, restrict from eating for a couple more hours to maximize the fat burning. But even effect. that doesn't matter unless you're in a calorie deficit. Even well, that, right. if you're in a calorie deficit, then yeah, you're burning. If, it, if you're not, even if you wait after your workout, it doesn't make a big difference. It literally really doesn't matter unless, you again, you're working out multiple times a day and you need to replenish some energy to have another workout. Now, why is this something that's pushed so hard in the fitness space? Why is this something that I even believed? Because they want you to take your product right then. That's it. What they did is with very brilliant marketing is they they ritualized the consumption of protein bars and, and protein shakes. And what they did is they said, hey, if you if you eat this right after your workout, you recover faster, build more muscle, you have to do it. Then they knew if they pressured that and pushed that, um, people would believe it and ritualize it, and they did. They sold way more products as a result of that uh, that, that false belief. But no, it's it's because again, post workout, you're, you're you're far less likely to eat a home cooked meal. Yeah. More likely to have the shake that you saved. You're here. right, though. I mean, it, the only time it's important is if because of you not eating right after you work out, you're missing your macro targets. That's it, right? So if if and that's where I would say, yes, this has a lot of value. Yeah, because you need to eat a little, you know. Right. Like you, I mean, if your body needs 150 grams of protein every day, it needs 150 grams of protein, regardless if it's getting right after a workout or not. So if, and if now, like in my case, when I decided to start skipping that meal, you know, if that now all of a sudden I lose 30, 40 grams a day that I, and I don't get that made up somewhere else in my meals, well then yes, that could affect my progress. Mm -hmm. But you know, all I would do is now my other five meals that I had today, instead of having six ounces, I'm having seven or eight ounces of meat. And that would make up for that difference of now skipping that meal and not getting that protein right afterwards. The, the difference of missing that anabolic window is so negligible. It's not even worth, I think, paying any attention to it. And in fact, like I said, I found it uh, right after a really hard workout. I'm not starving. Mm -hmm. It takes personally myself, like it takes me a while to come down before I even want to eat. It was only in my early years of personal training. And when I fell for that same myth where I used to like pound a shake right afterwards, I thought I had to get into this anabolic window. But I found for leaning out, for leaning out, it was like one of the best strategies was for me to now. What skip about that. what about gut health? I know you guys like interviewed a specialist on this. In terms of like the timing of that, when right after you work out and your body's inflamed, and then you're adding like certain types of food that might add to that like inflammation in, in excess. Well, that's the irony. The irony is eating right after you work out could contribute to gut health issues because. When you're working out and pushing yourself, you do get uh, localized inflammation on the areas that you work out, but you also get the systemic rise in inflammation in the whole body, including the gut. 
uh, including the. By the way, it's you know when you push yourself really hard and you throw up, um, or if you know it's it's part of your, your body doesn't want to do both, right? It wants to not have to digest while you're exerting yourself. So the gut gets inflamed along with the rest of the body. Now you're gonna throw food at it or a shake at it. Inflammation uh, increases the 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 odds that you're going to get what's called uh, intestinal permeab- hyperpermeability, meaning that food particles, protein particles, pass through the gut and the intestine when they shouldn't mm-hmm. into the bloodstream. Your body makes them invaders. Yeah, and your body point. exactly it reacts like it's a foreign invader, develops an immune response, and this may be why that protein shake that you've been having post workout for the last five years all of a sudden gives you gas and diarrhea and other issues. You've developed an intolerance to it. You've actually trained your body to become intolerant to it by having it right after your your hard workout. Now, I remember when we we discussed that, and I kind of afterwards, I remember digging into that because I found that very fascinating. And the likelihood of that is really small. Uh, Although, if you're somebody who trains like CrossFit or you train, (coughs) excuse me, really high intense, different story. Your average person who works out in the gym that does a sixty minute maps workout or whatever the the intensity level of that you're not getting you're the the st- yeah you're not getting the effects right. of like but if you already have gut issues <clears throat> yeah uh, probably not a good idea either right right workout. not ideal and you're, and again you're you're splitting hairs on the the actual benefits that all the science supports of doing that mm-hmm. for insulin spike reasons and all that bullshit 